My name is Dr. Asim Sharaf. I am graduated from Alman University of Science and Technology in the United Arab Emirates. I am GB dentist. And now I'm working on my own dental clinic in Jordanian capital, Amman. At the beginning, I want to thank uh, Dr. Mazen Domani for his kind invitation to give me this chance to give my lecture. And I hope uh, I will give it a simple, easy benefit as possible for you, and I hope you will enjoy it. It's about access cavity for indo before go indo or re indo treatment. It's about think about access cavity. Now let's start. Okay, we are going to talk about access cavity, and I will concern about my title of molars. We are going to talk some introduction of access cavity and next I will show you demonstration exactly of upper eight and some difference I will talk about some difference between upper versus lower molar and I will show you at the last my title cases in my dental practice first of all in the treatment consists of access cavity, instrumentation, and then obturation. But look to the, this pyramid. At the tip of the pyramid, I have obturation. At the base, I have access cavity. So if I want to reach to this one, to this last step of endotreatment, and I get success endotreatment, I should concern about access cavity. So I want to create a smooth straight line path to the canal system. This will facilitate me and allow me for biomechanical preparation for complete cleaning and allow me complete irrigation, okay, for this step, biomechanical preparation, and this facilitate me for obturation. I want to get the 3D hermetic dimension obliteration and sealing of the bulb canal to prevent bacterial recontamination. 3D hermetic. Uh, obturation, I mean for length, width, and density. Okay. Characteristic of ideal access cavity. My access cavity, okay, I don't want defective restoration or carious dentine, remaining carious dentine. I don't want remaining amalgam filling. This will become easily lodged in the canal system. This will affect my Instrumentation, this will affect my, as a barrier, uh, this make, make as barrier, affect my irrigation. Also for carriage dentine, if I, if, I, if I didn't remove remaining carriage dentine, so uh, also will affect my isolation because this will lead to leakage of saliva to my access cavity, to my procedure. For unsupported to the structure, also, as carries dentine, okay, and again, affect restorability of my tooth. And later on, this will lead to tooth fracture. Straight line axis. Look to this picture. I open axis cavity. I insert my file, but this interfere at this point. This is interfere from canal walls. If I go deeply, maybe what what are what are the drawbacks? If I didn't make straight line access, file separation, okay. Maybe if I go deep, maybe ledge, maybe here apical transportation, this one, or if I get maybe more. If I go deeply and make more pressure, maybe I will have many cracks here and even if I make good obturation still pain present in patient so the nice one here at this this picture I want to insert my file easily to the canal system without interference from canal walls what about flaring? What do we mean by flaring? Flaring <coughs> to wide the coronal orifice of the canal. 
See this one. See here. Look to this one. Look to this block. This one is called the flaring. <clears throat> this also as a straight line access facilitate me easy, uh, easy insertion of file irrigation <clears throat> without make pressure easily smooth to apical part here. Okay, by what I can do this flaring of canal orifice? H file, no problem. You can do it by H file, but H file is aggressive file, and also it remove bulk of dentin. So if I will make it even in coronal part, maybe I will get flaring of canal orifice, but in a regular shape. Got glidden, no problem. Also, but Although it is low speed, but it is with high torque and also it's non flexible files. Okay, what are the drawbacks of if I use Gats Gliden? Ledge, strip perforation, if I go deeply, and also maybe I have I will get fracture instrument of Gats Gliden. If it is Gats Gliden one, number one, I will get fracture from shank. If it is uh, gets glider number two, I will get fracture from head. Rotary files, no problem, in regular shape, but be careful. Don't do flaring in narrow canal or calcified canal. Why? Even if you use rotary files, maybe you will make more pressure for the tip of the rotary files and this will weaken this part and the fracture or maybe you will get uh, you will misleading the canal pathway okay what about diverge versus converge walls look to this one diverge make little bit diverge here why for accessibility we could use the few to see all canal orifices but if I make it converge with neck I, you cannot see all the orifice and you will see multiple viewpoints that maybe I insert my file here I go deeply oh whoops I get good perforation here okay even if I insert here okay in the canal but I cannot see maybe I get the pressure and even like straight line access that's why I make little bit diverged for view accessibility, but be careful, don't remove too much of dentine because dentine is most important part of tooth. This will affect your durability and will affect tooth stiffness and retention. How to locate canal orifices? Most important thing and most First step before do any indoor treatment to take radiograph. Very apical, nice one with a slope technique. Panorama, no one any better to no one to use panorama. It's not useful for diagnosis or detection of canals because image distortion. And we have CVCT, nice one, best one. To especially to detect endomes shape like mast canals or resorption, that's CBCT <coughs> will give you <coughs> three dimension while very apical two dimension. And for very apical also, what's the useful thing? You can detect the depth of bears to the from or if, if, from reference point here, okay to canal system so this step will give you an idea how much depth you uh, you should go what about sharp explorer and k file 10 look to this one this is upper six this is access cavity most important thing for what here this mb2 if i want to locate it by sharp explorer and K510 just a prop from MB1 canal orifice down by 2 to 3 millimeter 
and if you feel catch so this point we should imagine this point that this my area this is mb2 canal and slowly by k file 10 slowly try to insert little bit without the pressure very small very slowly step by step don't jump to rotary files what about bears i have two bears i have indo access bear this is high speed and i have low speed this is called miller bear long shank bear low speed but both of them <coughs> remove bulk of dentine bears just for access cavity not for locating canal orifices maybe low speed okay nice <coughs> to remove um, some part of dentine okay no problem but better than uh, than bears is ultrasonic tip especially for calcified canal orifice that's okay next bubble test what we mean by bubble test bubble test means we flow the excess cavity with sodium hypochlorite five percent nearly five percent and wait few minutes what will happen there will be reaction between sodium hypochlorite and organic part of the bulb tissue result in bubbles come out from the canal orifice this will give you indication that at this point that there is canal okay bubbles okay if i want to see bubbles okay naked eye if you want to see by uh, if you can see by naked eye okay no problem but better to see it with loops or better that microscope that loops will give you more view and more details two to five minutes uh, two to five times than naked eye and uh, while microscope better than loops better than naked eye that will give you more view and more details about six to 28 times more than naked eye red line test and white line test red line test means easy if you see bleeding point bleeding point so this indication directly that there is canal here while about white line test what we mean by white line test suppose you open this axis cavity and you locate mb1 this tubercle and palatal canal and you want to allocate the mb2 if you see at this point white line What's this? What we mean by this white line? What do I mean by white line test? It means dentine dust, either from necrotic tooth or from dentine, gum, uh, dentine dust from access cavity without water coolant, without suitable water coolant. So this will accumulate at canal orifice and give you white spot that will give you indication that this is canal orifice this is what we mean by white line test now I'm going to show you a demonstration of axis cavity of upper 8 I support my fingers and I respect my anatomy of the tooth. Don't forget this. Your eyes with your hands and your eyes directly to the direction of the bear and to the tooth also. Don't miss that.
next bulb extubation. Now, next step, I want to scout my canal system. I want to negotiate the canal to see how is the system, how is the shape. See the Baltal canal. You see this? It's curved. See this, I use here that segliden just one to two millimeter just at the orifice. That's to make it canal orifice wider, make it flare. I don't do go deeply. See this, I go deep with that segliden number one, and what will happen? Fracture from the shank. this part again I shift to K file 15 I check my canal and I check straight line access see this one this tobacco canal this one meso buckle canal This is final shape, final access cavity. Ah, look to this picture. What's, the, what's from this picture? I got message. This one, tooth is a part of your body, treat it or remove it. It's our responsibility to give more chances for tooth, even what's the problem for it so be smart and save tooth and they treat the tooth and make the tooth live more and more and more time because no substitute of natural tooth okay now we are going to talk about difference few differences between upper versus okay for upper molar it's triangular access cavity but most the challenge here what it's in B2 canal as we said for upper six it's about 95 to 100 percent present while for upper seven some sources said 50 to 60 and other say 25 to 35 but we mentioned before about how to locate canals canal orifice okay this is example of Access cavity of upper six seats triangle MB1, MB2, distobacal, and palatal canal. And look at here MB2, it's under MB1, about two to three millimeter. It's about lower, lower is rectangular, okay, three or four canals, more 50% of cases is for canals. And maybe okay between uh, mesobuccal and mesolingual, there is median canal which is about one to fifteen percent. Okay, now I want to show you an access cavity. How can I detect if it is four canals or three canals? See here, I have here MB meso uh, meso uh, mesobuccal. I have here mesolingual. I will draw a line from the middle part here to the mid part here, the other side. If there is canal here, you know, so this is three canals, but if there is only, so if there is no canal, sorry, if there is no canal just beside this line, so I have two canals, stobacal and distolingual. Look at this one. If you see it, I have 
only mesobuccal, mesolingual, I draw a line from middle part till here. Oh, I found here canal at the middle line. So only three canals. Cases. Look to this one. This patient come with lower six. Okay. I see here in my x-ray two laminar dura here, mesially, two laminar dura in this three. So okay, I put in my mind that there is four canals. Look at here, rectangular axis cavity. I draw a line from middle part here to middle part here. There is no canal here inside, just beside this my line uh, this my line. So there is here two canals. And this is final, this is obturation. Okay. Look to this one, lower seven. Okay, what I have see, what I see here. See here also two lamina dura. Okay, there's two canals here, and there is one big canal. But see the axis cavity. Mesobuccal, mesolingual, draw line. Okay, at the middle of my line there is canal. So exactly there is three canals. Sometimes X-ray, if you if you don't make slope, if you if you are not uh, make uh, if you don't make slope technique and see there is uh, extra canal or fourth canal, I mean. So at axis cavity, make this step, and this is the final filling obturation. Okay. See this one, lower seven with four canals. First of all, before I discuss this lower seven, see this one. This is not our job. This is not our responsibility to treat the tooth for patient. It's bad RCT, bad filling, resorption of bone. So, unfortunately, this going to extract. But we are going to save lower seven. Okay, for lower seven, maybe I cannot see fourth canal. Maybe I see, maybe just I I see okay this one one two three but I don't see if there's fourth canal. Again, mesobuccal, mesolingual, draw line. No line here, no canal at the middle part, so there is canal here, canal here. But look at this one. I know this remaining amalgam filling, but why I didn't remove it? Because I don't want to lose tooth structure, I want tooth support. So, although, uh, so this part of amalgam filling is away from my axis cavity, so this will not affect my can uh, my access cavity or not affect my procedure Subturation and this is filling see this one four canals lower seven let's go to upper upper six okay I put in my mind okay I have four canals okay as we said before 95 to 100 percent but I didn't see, uh, I don't see here anything. Where's canal? Just palatal canal? Okay, just to back up. Maybe here is a back up, but I don't see where is MB2. This one. Okay, next ray. I didn't see it. But I have other steps. As we said, sharp explorer. Okay, file number 10. Okay, just to drop it here. I feel catch. I slowly start instrument filing, filing, filing. Begin with K file 10. And you should be patient while you open this canal because mostly it's narrow. See this triangular axis cavity. And this is duration. Okay. Now we are going to show upper seven this one again this is not responsibility as doctors to treat 
like this okay look at this upper seven. Oh wow I have mb2 here as we told as we mentioned before I don't see here anything I cannot detect mb2 maybe by CBCT I can detect it because as we said before give me three uh, three dimension while variable two dimension only but in axis cavity again probe by explore sharp explorer or k file down to mb1 orifice two to three millimeter i feel catch start slowly instrument tensor tensor instrument and you will get it this is final see this one a little mb2 mb1 and this tobacco this final filling oh, okay now i finished my lecture and my message here at this page is indo subject is not small or not big but i can consider it's a huge sea of information we should know basic and we should follow information because there is every day there is a new there is a news there is a new step there is a new technique there is a new materials there is a new technique so stay updated okay now this is my email and this is my facebook name and instagram and my phone number so anyone if you anyone wants to ask me any question you're most welcome uh, i want to thank you for uh, to show my lecture and i hope i will give it as simple as possible and i want also to thank again dr mazen domani for his kind invitation to me okay thank you so much again greetings from jordan and have a nice day